Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Moa aka Swedish Whiskey Girl and today we're having a look at an Italian whiskey. We are going to try the Puni Alba and um, Puni is of course a distillery from Italy located in the Alps. So it's about two, three hours away from ski resorts like Solden, um, Madonna di Campiglio, St. Anton and like Val Gardena and Serfaus, so in that kind of region of the Alps, so quite close to the Austrian border. And Puni Distillery gets its name from the nearby river of Puni, which goes through the Venosta Valley, where the distillery is located. So I'm thinking maybe next time I'm in the Alps, if I'm in that part of South Tyrol, I might have to kind of make a little wee stop by, hopefully. And of course, I need to say a massive thank you to Tony for sending me a wee sample of this. I've been so curious to try it, of course, as well, because it's the first time I'm ever trying an Italian whiskey. So they have used both malted rye, malted wheat and malted barley to make this expression. It says at 43% EBV and it's been matured in Sicilian Marsala casks and also finished in ex Isla casks. The name of the whiskey, Alba, also means of course dawn in Italian and it's also the Gallic word for Scotland. So it's a bit of a connection between the two. And another distillery also have their pot stills that are from Scotland. They also have a really fascinating look of their distillery. I'll put a photo up so you can see it, but it's this kind of square building um, which has been both the distillery has been designed by an Italian designer and also the bottle. So it has this really interesting kind of minimalistic shape, but I really like the look of it. And yeah, it's just interesting how they're taking this kind of Italian heritage of the signing and putting it into both the distillery and the bottles as well. And Puni started up distilling in 2012, I believe. So this is a three-year-old whiskey and Alba was first released in 2015, I believe. And it sits at 43% EBV. Since then, they have released a few other expressions, one with wine cask influence. They're doing a lot of interesting things, so I'll definitely keep a close eye on these moving forwards. But let's start by having a little look on the whiskey. Let's have a nose. Mm. It feels green initially. It's quite, it has a, like a grassiness to it. Which of course could be a bit of that kind of youthful and vegetal notes coming through, but it's more like a pleasant malty grassiness than the kind of new make sharpness, if that makes sense. A very pleasant nose, because it's like like a malty grassiness. So if you mix like dry malts with a bit of kind of dried grass, and then you also had like some floral essence in the room and a little bit of kind of citrus peel. Like it's quite perfumed, but not in the way the perfume has this sharper alcohol influence. It more feels quite smooth and quite just a little bit refined in a way because all these aromas just kind of swirl around and intertwine. It's like a floral, grassy, citrus, malty note, but a warming malty note and quite smooth and not, it doesn't on the nose feel like it's going to be super dry. And it does have some tropical fruits, which is surely that Marsala influence coming through. Like a bit of oranges and like sun ripe fruits. A bit of pineapple. But let's have a little taste. Chin chin. Interesting. It definitely has an Isla influence from those casks. The smoke is coming out. Quite a rich bonfire smoke, I'd say. Quite dry smoke. The smoke's quite powerful, more than I was anticipating, because I didn't get it that much on the nose. 
and I'm still not. The nose is quite sweet and quite smooth, but on the palette, it's quite a big, powerful smoke. Dry bonfire smoke, like a summer bonfire. And it almost has this, this aroma that makes you feel a little bit like licorice. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that. And the nose is still like so friendly. It's like sitting there. It's like, oh, I'm I'm easy going, and I'm I'm a little bit sweet, and yeah, come try me. And then you try it, and then just like smoke comes out. Has a very kind of pleasant, fresh mouthfeel. But initially you get this smoke and then it feels a bit like licorice or almost like like throat sweets it's like berry flavored throat sweets meets this slight licorice feel and hmm, way more smoke than i thought that it would have I'm also looking for aromas that might suggest the mash bill. And I'm guessing that's what I'm initially getting on the nose, this kind of mix or an intertwinement of flavours and or aromas that are influenced by the mash bill. But I wonder if it's that slight rye note that is coming through that makes me think of licorice in a way, alongside the smoke. It does have a maltiness on the palate as well, but it feels... The malty note goes really well alongside that big bonfire smoke. It's also slightly drying, but I wonder if... Because it doesn't feel overwhelmingly dry, which I wonder if the Marsala casks are influencing and kind of rounding off the edges a little bit. Because when it's a, how, it's a three-year-old, I mean, the climate in the Alps can, of course, be really hot summers and really cold winters. But I was, ex I mean, maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's really interesting. And if you like smoky whiskies, this would be an interesting one to try, I think, for a lot of people. A definitely a really interesting distillery. I would love to try some of their unpeated spirits as well and some of the ones that have been matured in wine casks, especially right now when I'm so fascinated about wine casks. I would of course love to hear if you have any recommendations. Have you tried any of the other whiskies in the range? Have you tried the Alba? What did you think of it? Please put your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I'd be absolutely thrilled if you would consider using my affiliate links with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange, or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society the next time you're shopping with them. All those links are, of course, in the description here below, as well as links to my Instagram, my Patreon, my Teespring shop, and my website if you're curious about that. And as always, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. I am so grateful that you want to continue to support me on my whiskey journey. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava, school.